When we switched our heating method from electric to wood, I started researching how to cook on a wood stove. There wasn't much information available, but I eventually figured out that it's really easy. If you're already heating your home with wood, it's hardly more trouble to use the stove for cooking as well. Cooking on a wood stove saves electricity. It also means that you can still cook even when the power goes out. Now I cook on my wood stove almost every day in the winter. Some of my favorite meals to cook on a wood stove include steaks, slow cooked crock pot type meals such as chicken and rice or roast with potatoes, bone broths, and soup. It's also really handy for warming up leftovers or for melting butter. If you've seen any 1800s era movies, you may have noticed the beautiful old wood cook stoves most people had in their kitchens. These wood powered stoves typically had burners, an oven next to the firebox, and a warmer above the stove. Some had tanks to heat water as well. These old fashioned cook stoves can still be purchased today, although most need repairs to be usable. There are a few companies that still make new ones. I actually had one at one point, but unfortunately didn't have a place to set it up, so I never got the opportunity to use it. Using an actual wood cook stove has several advantages, including the oven and the fact that it doesn't throw as much heat so it can be used year round. But most of us just don't have access to one of these antique stoves. So this video is about all the things that you could do using a regular wood burning heating stove. Most wood burning stoves can be used for cooking. The main criteria is that it has a flat top, or at least a large enough flat area to set a pot or pan on. If you plan on cooking on a wood stove during an emergency, or anytime, I've found the book Wood Stove Cookery to have lots of great information. It's actually meant for cooking in an old fashioned wood cook stove, the kind that has burners in an oven. But most of the information also applies to cooking on a regular wood stove. It goes into detail on how to maintain a consistent heat for cooking. It also covers the burning temperatures of different types of wood. For wood stove cooking, stainless or aluminum pots are perfectly fine to use in an emergency. They won't hold up as well in the long term though. I use stainless steel pots for quick jobs such as warming leftovers or melting butter. For any serious cooking job, I get out the cast iron. The three cast iron pieces that I use every day are a frying pan, a Dutch oven without legs, and a griddle. These can be used on a regular stove or oven as well. Mine get more use than any of my stainless pots and pans. I love how food doesn't stick to cast iron, and it's so easy to clean. It doesn't start flaking off into your food like a coated non-stick aluminum pan. It's probably the most versatile kind of cookware you can own. I also use a cast iron trivet for wood stove cooking, which allows me to cook at a lower heat than directly on the stove's surface. It's especially helpful for keeping food warm. You can easily vary the temperature of your wood stove by the size of wood you're burning, regardless of the type of wood. For high heat cooking, such as frying, use mostly or all kindling to build a hot, fast burning fire. A normal fire with large logs that are completely dry will give you a medium heat cooking surface. For long, slow cooking, you have a few options. You can just barely keep the fire going, waiting till it almost goes out to add another log. You can also shut the damper most of the way. A third option is to set your pot up on a cast iron trivet so that it's farther removed from the heat and cooks at a lower temperature. Cooking on a wood stove isn't hard, but it is a learning curve. I have to admit I've burned a couple things while learning how to cook on a wood stove. I think my absolute favorite way to cook on a wood stove is to use it like a crock pot. It's an easy, hands-off method to slow cook a delicious meal. When using your wood stove for this type of cooking, you don't even have to be there the whole time. I use a cast iron Dutch oven as my crock pot. Get a nice fire going and add enough wood to keep it burning for two to three hours. This is perfect for Sundays. By the time we get home from church, the fire is mostly out, but the food is cooked and still warm. One of my favorite recipes is chicken and rice on the wood stove. For this recipe, you'll need a cast iron pot or a Dutch oven without legs. And it needs to have a lid large enough to fit your chicken. You'll put in one whole chicken, one and a half cups of rice, four cups water, one and a half cups of chopped vegetables such as onions, garlic, carrots, celery, peas, or dark leafy greens, or one half cup dehydrated vegetables plus an extra half cup water, and salt and pepper to taste. I put everything in the cast iron pot. 
making sure the rice is submerged in the water. You can add a dash of lemon juice or herbs such as rosemary and thyme. Start over a hot fire to get it going. Then let the fire slowly burn until the meat reaches 165 degrees. Another recipe I make often is roast and potatoes over a wood stove. You can use any type of roast for this recipe. Beef, lamb, or pork all work well. You'll need a cast iron pot with a lid that's large enough to fit your roast. You'll need a roast, olive oil, and red wine or red wine vinegar, potatoes and root vegetables such as onions, beets, carrots, and turnips, and salt and pepper. Place the roast in your pot. Surround it with potatoes and vegetables. Drizzle wine or wine vinegar with olive oil over the whole thing. Top with salt and pepper to taste. I sometimes add some garlic and rosemary as well. Start over a hot fire to get it going, and then let the fire slowly burn until the meat is fully cooked and the potatoes can easily be pierced with a fork. I also make soup over my wood stove. This nutritious soup is easy to throw together and versatile. It's a great way to use leftovers, such as a whole chicken carcass or the remains of a bony and roast. You'll need a cast iron pot with a lid big enough to fit all your ingredients. You'll need leftover bone-in meat. You could also use fresh soup bones or a whole chicken, just allow extra cooking time if you're starting with raw meat. Water to cover the meat, vegetables of choice, potatoes or rice, and salt and pepper. Place your bone-in meat in the cast iron pot. If you're using dehydrated vegetables or rice, add them now. Fresh vegetables and potatoes can be added halfway through the cooking process. Add water to barely cover the other ingredients, along with a little salt and pepper. Start cooking over a hot fire to get it going. Then let the fire burn at a medium temperature to keep it simmering until the water turns into darker colored broth and the meat is falling off the bone. Remove the meat and let it cool until it can be handled enough to remove the meat from the bones. If the vegetables are still crunchy when pierced with a fork, you can leave them on the stove to cook a bit more while the meat is cooling. Take the meat off the bones and add it back into the soup before serving. That's it. Since a regular wood stove doesn't have an oven, it's pretty hard to bake on. You can still bake certain items though. I've had good luck with baking bread in a cast iron pot with a lid. To bake, you'll need a pot that has a lid. You'll also want to keep the temperature of the stove on the lower end. When baking a loaf of bread on the stove, I flip it over halfway through the cooking process so the top can cook too. One thing to be aware of when baking is that cast iron retains the flavors of everything you've cooked in it. While this imparts wonderfully complex flavors to meat and savory dishes, you might not want your sweeter items to have hints of onion flavor. You can get around this by either using separate cast iron pots for sweet items, or just by using stainless steel for this type of cooking. Cast iron is meant to have a coat of oil or grease on it at all times. This is called seasoning. It keeps the iron from rusting and helps your food not to stick. When cleaning, you want to avoid stripping all the oils off the surface. Most of the time, wiping the pan out with a dry cloth or paper towel is sufficient to remove any food residue. For messier jobs, you can use a small amount of milder, eco-friendly soap from the natural cleaner section, or try our homemade cleaning soap recipe. I use a regular kitchen scrubber to get rid of any stubborn bits of food. Avoid using dish detergents such as Dawn, which will strip the oils. It's fine to soak cast iron for up to a few hours if needed, but too much soaking will cause it to rust. Never put your cast iron in the dishwasher.